When we walk in the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and all who will trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, nor a cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives away. Not a doubt, not a fear, not a sigh or a tear can abide while we trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says, we will do. Where he sins, we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, trust and obey. There is no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. And tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the safe the Lord. My friends, hello. God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wood in here. And I thought I'd read uh, just a little bit of something that's just been dancing in my spirit. One of the most beautiful songs, one of the most beautiful hymns ever written. And uh, it emphasizes something that's de-emphasized today. We have de-emphasized the trust and obey aspect of uh, our walk with the Lord. We, we emphasize what God will do and what the Lord will give us and all this, these other things, but we've forgotten that number one, you got to trust him. And secondly, we must obey him. I have a tremendous concern uh, about uh, uh, our departure, the seemingly departure or the, uh, we, 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 we are lowering the importance of doctrinal purity. Fewer and few, few preachers preach from the Bible. We're treating the scriptures as though we don't need them. Many of us are making up revelations and things off the top of our heads. We're saying that it's God because we feel it or because we dreamed it or whatever the case may be. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, if you want to be blessed and if you want to simplify your life, if you want to simplify your life, here's what you do. Stay true to the Bible. Stay true to the doctrine of biblical Christianity. Do nothing, whether it is good or bad, at the expense of the doctrine. You see, even when Paul said he became all things to all men that he might win some, what wasn't included in the all was a departure from his faith in Jesus Christ. It wasn't a departure from walking in the revelation that God had given him. It wasn't a departure from being a Christian and serving Jesus Christ. And I want to say to you who are watching today, listen, listen, make sure that uh, number one on your list of priorities is doctrinal purity. Let that be let that matter more than walking in success or uh, being able to prove that God has blessed you because of the accumulation of material things or because, you know, you're in demand every time we look, there you are and everybody's pulling for you and uh, uh, you're preaching all over the world. I think these things are wonderful. Praise God for uh, a career. Thank God for doing well in this life. Thank God for whether your, your job is a spiritual one or a secular one that you are succeeding. I think you should. I think you should work hard to be a success. But listen, only go, only go and only rise as high as doctrinal purity will allow you to. Nothing should, should be done outside of the purity of the doctrine of Jesus Christ and the purity of God's word. And I'm going to be talking about it tonight. And uh, I, I, I'm, listen, I'm going to be uh, uh, talking about that strong man again. You know, we talked about being Stephen Strong a few uh, days ago. And uh, what a mighty man of God uh, Stephen was. And I'm just, I'm just uh, taken aback by this man of God. 
We, we took a break from Stephen this past weekend, and what a wonderful time we had. I want to thank all of the saints. I want to thank our members. I want to thank our friends, both near and far. And we're yet hearing from you for the way that you were a blessing to this man of God, uh, to my family, to my lovely wife, Pamela, during our 36th pastoral anniversary. Hey, I'm in my 36th year of serving. And uh, depending upon whether you're dealing with a uh, Chaldean uh, uh, calendar or the, 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 uh, the, the Hebrew calendar, uh, I'm in my 37th year. <laughs> God is good and he's worthy to be praised. And I'm excited about it. And I'm determined as never before to stay true to the God of the Bible to trust him, to live for him, to trust and obey, and to keep at the very top of my list of priorities, doctrinal purity. Is this scripture or not? What does the Bible say about this? Am I in line with the word of God as I do these things? And am I in line with the doctrine of the church of God in Christ? The Bible first, then my organization, uh, denomination that I'm a part of, I'm a proud member of the church of God in Christ. Uh, uh, that's second. And as long as the church uh, uh, goes with the Bible, I'm with the church church. You, de you depart from the Bible, you depart from me because I'm staying with the word of God. Why are you going to stay with the word of God, preacher? Because it's the only thing that shall abide forever. Heaven and earth is going to pass away, but God's word will never fail. And once we leave the word, we get into the murky, that murky uh, 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 thing called opinion. And one opinion is just as good as the other. Uh, and so what we want is to have to to uh, follow God's truth and preach it and teach it and live it. And I'll tell you one thing God's truth does is it fills you with joy. Brother Gary gives you a reason to keep going, a reason to stay strong, a reason to, to, to face each day with a smile. My God, the Lord let me wake up and I'm alive and well and life is worth living. Why? If for no other reason, if for no other reason, it's because Jesus is on the throne. When I wake up in the mornings, here's what I say. I say, Lord, I want to thank you because I'm alive and well today. Life is still worth living. Yes, because Jesus Christ is on the throne. Now, I'm excited about being back in the saddle tonight, teaching the word of God right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And I'm telling you, I'm showing up with bells on, and I want the saints, uh, the members of the church, you the very same ones who turned out this past weekend, and you guys were great. Thank you for your effort. Thank you for every word of dedication, every song that was sang. I want to thank uh, Bishop Felton uh, Smith, what a mighty word of God he gave us. He blessed us real good. I want to thank our friends who came from near as far and far, members from as far away as New York City, Georgia, uh, praise the Lord, and friends from as far away as uh, 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 L.A. and California flying in to be a part of this uh, move of God. Our friends and family members uh, from as far away as Charlotte, North Carolina, being a part of this move of God. And listen, the members of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, I'm telling you, God has given me the finest congregation in the world. Yes, in the world. Gary, I said in the world. In the world. They stand by this preacher. They pray for me. They circle the wagon. And we've been here for 36 years. And they've never, I've said this before, the members of the upper room have never allowed me to fight alone. Yes, we've been in many battles. Yes, we've had many scars. Yes, the enemy has come against us. But here's what we've all experienced together. We've all experienced that God, the God of the Bible, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is with us. And why is Christ with us? Christ is with us because we're with him. And we're going to Stay with Jesus, and we're going to stay on the Word of God. And as you can tell, I am fired up. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm excited about walking in the word of the Lord tonight. And listen, what we're going to have tonight. I tell you what we're going to have. You know what we're going to have? Bible study. <laughs> you guessed it. That's right. We're just going to study the word. Nothing, nothing any different. I'm going to get up. I'm going to open my Bible and the saints are going to reach down and they're going to grab that. You, if you, if you're tuning in, you're going to hear the pages turning and we're going to read the Bible and we're going to study the Bible. Isn't that a novel idea? Well, wouldn't it be something if more preachers and churches, listen to me, preacher, would just preach the Bible. You ain't got to preach someone else's stuff. Well, man, I like to preach this person's stuff or that person's stuff. Man, look, as far as I'm concerned, they can have that stuff. Preach the Word of God. Teach the Bible. Study the Word of God. And uh, as I close, I just want to encourage you to study the Word, to get in the Word and stay there. The Word of God will never let you down. And the day will come when the God of this book, the God of this Word, is going to come and take us home. And I just thank the Lord for Jesus Christ. So we're going to trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. Oh, and those pastors out there from near and far that were so kind to communicate with yours truly uh, during this, uh, 36th anniversary. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your kindness. God bless you. We'll see you tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ.